on the 1300 block of Astor Street in the Gold Coast is a row of facades where you can feel the history as you walk along. And if you're feeling the history, it starts to pulsate when you get to this one, 1310. This townhouse was the home of John Wellborn Root. He was a key architect of Chicago in the late 19th century. He lived here in the middle of what are now three townhouses. There were four. He built four. Only three remain. Not only did John Wellborn Root live here, but his sister-in-law, Harriet Monroe, who founded Poetry Magazine, lived here. But it isn't only about who lived here. It's about the beauty of this house. Look at this facade with the gorgeous brick and all sorts of other beautiful work in the trim. And the house is in the same beautiful condition inside, starting with this spectacular plaster ceiling hanging over the living room. And this, an original fireplace, exactly as Root designed, and then this great bay of windows looking out over the street. You've got the beautiful wood framing, the leaded glass windows. You can almost hear the horse-drawn carriages clattering down the street out front. And then when you come through here through this pair of pocket doors, you can hear some of the architects and civic leaders who planned the World's Fair for Chicago. Before he died, Root was intimately involved in the planning of the World's Fair in Chicago, and this was his study at the time. So people like Daniel Burnham, his partner, many other important people involved in the planning of the fair would have worked right here on our great World's Fair. This was, again, his study. There was more wood around the bottom here, but it was a piece of all this great wood composition you've got here with the spindles above as well as on the stairs, some gorgeous curves on the stairs, great knobs. He really went crazy with the wood, and the nice thing is nobody's gone crazy on it later and painted it green. It's still in its original condition. So again, some around the bottom was removed to create a dining room here. So what you get now, because the columns were retained, is this nice mixture of enclosure and openness. Originally, the dining room was here at the back of the main floor of the house. The kitchen was one flight below at the street level because it was only used by servants and they could carry the food up when needed. However, for today's living, the kitchen needs to come up. So when that happened, the dining room slid forward to where the study used to be. This became the kitchen. More recently, it came to look like this. These cellars redid it in a way that is sort of suited to the origins of the house with all this nice wood cabinetry. There's a great bay of windows. You can cook in here or out there on the terrace. You also have a nice butler's pantry with a sink that is original to the house. Now, aside from that main level I've just been on, there are three more levels to the house, two above and one below. Below is the street level where you have a very nice original foyer with beautiful beams over the ceiling. The rest of the space would have been for servants at the time, including the old kitchen. Now it's a nice big family room and an office. And then here on the upper two floors, you have four bedrooms in all. There are, on this level are two, one on either end, both very large, both with bathrooms. This one in the front preferred because it's got a big, fantastic dressing room. And then on the floor above, as you come up under this great skylight, you find two more bedrooms, another large one at the front and a smaller one at the back. Off that smaller bedroom, you have a rooftop terrace. It's all shut down for winter, of course. But the reason to come up here is to show how the city has grown up all around this house. While all of those tower above us, there's no denying that in the condition it's in, this house still has the spirit of John Wellborn Root very much alive.